Heyo, Andrew from the future here uh, once again to just give you a quick reminder that this video ended up having to be split up from another video because of length reasons. That's it. So what you are about to watch is part two of a ranking Marvel United Multiverse trilogy of videos. The first one was ranking all the new gameplay modes that they added. This one right now is just going to be about ranking the boxes. So every expansion, every box that's going to come in our shipments next year and we're going to end this trilogy off with a bang in a couple of weeks we will present to you ranking the characters every character coming in mu multiverse i'm going to rank them in the order that i am excited for them so that's coming in the future right now you're just watching ranking the boxes so let me give the floor back to past andrew and let's carry on with our regularly scheduled programming cheers so there it is. That's my ranked list of my most anticipated gameplay modes. Now, for the second half of this video, let's talk about boxes. The way I operate, because I'm a strange individual, is I'm one of those people who loves saving the best for last. If I'm looking forward to something, uh, I love kind of leaving it for last because I like letting that anticipation build a little bit. I guess it comes from my background as a storyteller. I like kind of pacing things out in as interesting a way as possible. When Marvel United's last couple seasons arrived for me last year. While I was waiting for them to come, I made a list in my head of all the separate boxes I was going to get and how excited I was for them, just like we're about to do now. So what I did was when it finally came, uh, for example, the X-Force box was the box I was the least excited for. I don't have anything against it. I just didn't really, I don't really care for Cable. I didn't know anything about X-Force characters. So that was the one that had me the least excited. Whereas the stretch gold box with Kingpin in it had me the most excited because it's Kingpin. He's my boy. So what I did was I made a list, uh, just like we're about to do now. I ranked it. And when I got my shipment, I opened them in that order, starting from the bottom. So I opened the X-Force box first and I was like, yay, this is fun. Look, I got all these characters. I got all these cards. I sleeved them. Great. And then I moved on and I opened the next most exciting box and then the next most exciting box until I got to that giant box with Kingpin in it. And the excitement was so real that when I finally picked up that Kingpin figure, I think I did a little dance. So I'm going to do the same thing next year when Multiverse arrives. I'll be working with fewer boxes because the last time I got two seasons in one shipment, but I want to have that same experience. So I'm going to share that with you. I'm going to rank the boxes that come in the multiverse pledge and what order I'm excited for them and conversely what order I will be opening them come this time next year. Just like with the gameplay modes, there happen to be 10 boxes in this season. So here we go. Let's rank them. My number 10, my bottom least exciting box, the one I will be opening first just to kind of get it out of the way, is Secret Invasion. I'm going to be real with you all. I apologize if you are a fan of them. I just don't care for scrolls. They, they bore me. They do nothing for me. Hey, I can shapeshift. Great. I've got four other characters with that same power. And guess what? They're more interesting than you, scroll. Mystique is a more interesting person than a scroll. And the fact that this is a box of four scrolls plus their queen, plus a bunch of S.H.I.E.L.D. characters who all pretty much look the same. There's really very little for me to get excited about in this box. I'm still excited for it, but only by a little bit. So when the shipment arrives, Secret Invasion is going to be the first box I open because I just want to get it out of the way so I can jump into the juicier waters of other boxes. So sorry, Secret Invasion. You are at the bottom. Something has to be really from this point on. There's nothing that I'm not excited for. You know, there's only one box with scrolls. So that's the only one where I'm like, eh. everything else, I'm just like, yeah, 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 let's open it. I'm, I'm giddy. My number nine most anticipated box is going to be World War Hulk. But with World War Hulk, the only reason it's this low for me is just because it's some characters that I really am just less excited for. Like, okay, Gladiator Hulk, cool. I prefer my vanilla Hulk, to be honest. So he doesn't excite me all that much. Ares doesn't really excite me at all. I can't see past Ares being a Wonder Woman villain and then, you know, a figure from mythology and then a Marvel character. Like, to me, Ares is just pff, nothing, whatever. And I can't even remember who else is in this box. Oh yeah, Hercules. Hercules is cool, I guess. Um, Doc Samson for me is the highlight of the box, though. Doc Samson, I can't wait. So 
even when I open the boxes, I go through that whole mentality of save the best for last. So when I open this box, I'll probably start with Ares and get him out of the way and then Hulk and then everybody else and then finish with Doc Samson because that's the real meat in this beef sandwich. Uh, so number nine is World War Hulk. Number eight is going to be Annihilation. Annihilation is pretty groovy. It's just very small. It feels like a season one expansion where you barely get anything. Uh, we've got, what, four heroes and a villain, though. So that's that's not too shabby. And these heroes are exciting to me. I like the way they look. First of all, Nova Prime, Richard Ryder, right? The legit Nova sounds awesome. I say legit. I don't need to poo on the other Nova, whose name I can't remember. But, you know, to me, Richard Ryder is the Nova I know. And then you've got characters like Moondragon, like Philovel, Quasar. Philovel looks awesome. She's got that sword. I love the way she looks, so I'm excited about these heroes way more than I am from the heroes in the Hulk box. And then the crown jewel at the top of it up is you've got Annihilation, or Annihilus, rather, a big villain who uh, has not been represented in the game till now. So, of course, I'm excited to crack Annihilus open, more excited than I am to crack Ares open. Why wouldn't I be? So that's why this box is going to be number eight. My number seven most anticipated box is, and this is going to make a lot of people mad, Age of Apocalypse. When they revealed Age of Apocalypse as an expansion, that's when I saw the most vocalization from the comments in terms of, oh my god, okay, now we gotta have Age of Apocalypse Rogue, we gotta have Age of Apocalypse Wolverine, we gotta have Age of Apocalypse Storm. What? Like, they just kept throwing in all these Age of Apocalypse characters. To me, as a guy who didn't grow up with that story, and as a guy who doesn't really want as many variants when there are still so many other characters we haven't covered yet, the idea of a whole world of just variants, even though that's multiversal themed and I get it, it's on brand, didn't excite me as much. However, I'm excited for the Age of Apocalypse box because it does have a lot of great stuff in it that interests me. It does have Morph, it has Nemesis, it has Dark Beast, it has Apocalypse, who admittedly is my least favorite X-Men villain, but I never got a chance to get the first Apocalypse box um, because I just couldn't get it. So this box is finally going to provide me with an apocalypse and he's actually red because he should be because apocalypse should not be a hero but i digress this is finally going to give me some of those little x-men adjacent characters that i was missing uh and it's exciting because of that so age of apocalypse is pretty groovy i'm gonna enjoy cracking this box open but not as much as i'm gonna enjoy cracking open box number six which is civil war please please don't boo me Here's why it's this low. Very simple reason, and it's just like what I've been saying before. It's some characters that I'm really excited for, and then some characters that I could take or leave. In this box, the characters that have me really chomping at the bit would be Kate Bishop, Goliath, Wonder Man, Tigra, and Hulkling. And that's a fair amount. There's a lot of good juice in this box. And then on the other hand, I got ones that I'm not as excited for, like Yellow Jacket and the Iron Man and, and whatever. And, and the game modes are cool. They're decent, but they're not game modes that I'm going to be using often, like we just talked about in the game modes countdown. So this whole box in general is kind of split down the middle. It's got a bunch of characters that I'm really anxious to see and a bunch of characters and modes that I'm just not going to really be all that interested in, right? So it kind of falls right in the middle for me. That's why it's number six. Now we're into my top five boxes and number five is going to be the multiverse core box. In all the excitement of this campaign, we tend to forget that there is a core box. It's kind of important. And the multiverse core box is just a fun box that really embraces the spirit of the theme of the multiverse. I think all in all, there's not a character here that I'm not interested in. I mean, we get to play as good guy Loki, and then we get an alternate Doctor Doom, which looks cool because he's on a throne, so I'll allow it. And then you've just got a bunch of great characters like Captain Carter and... Ironheart. We're finally going to get to play as Ironheart. And Immortus gets me excited. So there's just so much in this core box. It's just a juicy core box. And it gets overshadowed by everything else. But at the end of the day, number five is a nice slot for it because this core box is decent. It's not as full of like just great iconic characters as season two was because that X-Men box was pretty much flawless. But it's great. There's a, you're getting a lot in here, more than you get in season one, and they are utilizing their theme wonderfully. So the Multiverse Core Box number five, that's where it falls for me. Coming in at number four, the box I'm going to be opening next is going to be War of Kings. 
or I mean, let's all call it what it is. It's the Inhumans box, baby. This was the first expansion they announced pretty much. And it really just got me excited for what the rest of the campaign could bring because it was just so full of promise. It was a big chunk of characters that we were missing. The Inhumans had a lot in there. And to finally take that and put it all in the box and say, look at this, look at this expansion that is bigger than any expansion you've ever gotten. Look at the beautiful miniatures that are in it. The cards are colorful. Everybody's just looking prime and wonderful. I don't think there are any villains in it, if I'm remembering right. I think it was just a hero box. No, there was Gladiator and Vulcan. I lied. So you've got all these Inhumans, plus you've got some Shi'ar characters that I grew up with from those cartoons. That makes it one hell of a sexy box in this guy's opinion. I was so looking forward to the Inhumans. I love adding these Shi'ar characters to the mix. It's a flawless little expansion, really. It's everything I could want. It's a bunch of new characters that we don't have yet. None of them are variants. None of them are alternate skins. It's just new goodies. So that, to me, is perfection. And it's only number four. Now we're into the top three, the three expansions that have me the most excited, the final three boxes I'm going to open. Starting with number three, a box that might even give Frosthaven a run for its money, the coming of Galactus. I am so pleased with this box. Uh, every season has had a sort of standout villain campaign box, right? We had our Infinity Gauntlet with Thanos, then we had our Apocalypse Horseman one, which I missed out on, and then we had Galactus. The Thanos one was pretty sweet. The whole using the gauntlet and the stones was fun. The Apocalypse one didn't look quite as great because the Horsemen were just there for his mode. Couldn't, you know, they're not separate villains like the Black Order. So it looks like Simon understood that, and they came back and said, hold my beer, here's four heralds. But hold my other beer, because they're all playable as separate villains. But hold my other beer, because one of them is an anti-hero. But hold my fourth beer, because Silver Surfer is kind of a famous herald, so here's a card that lets you use him as a villain. But hold my fifth beer, because Galactus can be played without the herald mode, and it's just so much happening in this box. And to top it off, you have these great locations. They're thematic. The globe is there. You've got his shadow on it. He is the villain that we have been waiting for since season one. So finally getting a Galactus and having him look good. <clears throat> Everything about this, even the just the fact that the box says Fantastic Four on it, as if it's, you know, part of that brand. I love it. I love it to pieces. I can't wait to try Galactus. I can't wait to face off against Fire Lord and use Nova Frankie Ray as an anti-hero and throw Silver Surfer in there every once in a while and just have my characters go up against Galactus and be like, oh God, please don't eat me. There's so much in this one box. Uh, and it really inspired me for something for another video that will be coming down the pipeline later, but we're not going to jump ahead of ourselves too much. So that's number three. My number two most anticipated box is... Maximum Carnage. It has to be. It has to be. The fact that we're getting this box blows my mind. The Sinister Six Assembled mode is coming in here. Yeah, you've got your Carnage, Dark Carnage mode, but then you've got Scream and Shriek. Scream's gonna have the symbiotes and Demo Goblin and Doppelganger are a thing, and Scorpion is a thing, and we finally got Michael Morbius as the anti-hero he has to be. Uh, that's a terrible Morbius accent, but I, I, I don't apologize for it at all. That is just, I have no words. I have no words for how exciting this Maximum Carnage box is to me. As somebody who A, loves Spider-Man, B, loves Spider-Man villains, C, had Morbius as one of my most wanted characters, and D, would probably put Maximum Carnage as one of the only Marvel stories that I grew up with because I didn't read a lot of comics, but that was one that I knew that was ingrained in my head since childhood. So getting Maximum Carnage is just the cherry on this already delectable Sunday. But we got to add one more cherry on top, don't we? Because that was number two. My number one most anticipated box, the final box I will open when I get my goodies next year. Everybody say it with me now the Kickstarter stretch goal box. And it was pretty much like that for the last season because that's just a giant box full of toys. 
That's what it comes down to at the end of the day. And come on, you can already see my smile growing by a mile here. And hell, that's going to give the Frost Haven box a run for its money, is that enormous stretch goal box, particularly because we have people like Stature and uh, who else? Who's the other big person that was in there? I can't remember now. Stature and somebody else. Two big people are going to be in this box. It's going to be massive. Uh, I'm pretty sure it has more characters than the X-Men stretch goal box. And that was already a beefy box. So I just can't wait to look at the size of this piece of cardboard and pop it open and just dive into those cards and just sit there and put some music on and sleeve them and just look at the gorgeous artwork and all the colors and everything that the characters can do and shuffle them up and get all the pieces in the right place and maybe organize things a bit. Ah, it's, I know I'm a nerd for getting excited for that kind of stuff, but I don't even care. That stretch goal box is going to make this man the happiest clam this side of the Mississippi, whatever that even means anymore. So there you go. Those are the MU Multiverse boxes ranked in the order I am most excited for them, and thus the order I will be opening them in come next March. But let me know what your ranking is. What are the gameplay modes that you are most excited to see? What are the box orders that you are most excited for? I'm sure there are people who have Secret Invasion on top and I, I love you. Keep loving it. I don't even, you know, I'm not going to judge whatever. Scrolls be damned. So thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope uh, this video gave you some entertainment and made me wait just a little bit less uh, long and strenuous. And I'll see you all here in a few weeks for part two of this video, which is gonna be a long one, I'm gonna rank all the characters in the order that I'm least to most excited for them. That's gonna be a big boy, but it's coming. So ranking characters is coming next. Until that time comes, thank you so much for joining me here on Digital Charcuterie. I'm Andrew Fantasia. I will see you all next time for whatever comes next in the master plan.